Christian greetings to our viewers at home. That appointment with God has finally arrived yet again. Mm. God is here to tap a little with, with us. Let us sit back and allow the Holy Spirit to interpret scriptures to us. When this lesson is done, we should be able to say, truly the Lord has been with us. Our title for the lesson today is Jesus and the Apostles' View of the Bible. Mm. With me here today is Brother Wongolo, oh, yeah. Brother Dandala, Brother Mutle, and Sister Nube, your host. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Brother Wongolo will pray for us. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the opportunity to share your word, discuss your word. We pray, Lord of God, that as we will be talking through your word, may the Holy Spirit guide us, may it lead us, Lord of God, to all truths. And Lord of God, may out of these conversations, may your children at home be blessed. And we pray and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome once again. The title of our lesson today is Jesus and the Apostles' View of the Bible. Our memory text today comes from Matthew chapter 4, verses 4. I will read in your hearing. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is Matthew chapter 4, verses 4. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verses 4 is very interesting. He says, Men shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Have you noticed that the only word that came out of the mouth of God in the Bible is in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. That's where it talks about God as the literal speaker. Other than that, throughout the Bible, God used human authors. But when Jesus in Matthew 4, of, <laughs> in Matthew 4 talks about men living on every word that comes out of the mouth of God, he's covering all the inspired writers. And he's actually saying that the inspired writers of the Bible, particularly all the 66 books, were speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus sees the power behind and still says they were just a mouthpiece. It was God who was communicating to them. And so it, it, it brings this to home, that we shall not live <clears throat> by prayer alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God through God's mouthpieces. Their writings, which are the Bible's writings, are authoritative. And that's what I'm getting. They are authoritative. So as opposed to men who love to say uh, that, no, 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 but uh, you live according to the writings of other people. You can also produce your own, your own text and, and live according to it. But here, the way Jesus uses the Bible, he says it's God's mouth that speaks through the agents whom he used to reveal his will to humanity in the course of history. That's what I got in the memory text. Uh, one of the things that is interesting, it says, um, it says, the word that comes from God. So God sets the stage. Yes, sir. Mm. Okay. So God, dis, uh, ex, you know, he, he kind of interprets what men should be. It's not the other way around. Mm. And we're finding today it's actually the other way around where man interprets who go, who God must yes, be. Yes, yes. You know. Yes. So 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 to that point, you, we're finding a situation now where man is living out of the word that comes out of his mouth on who God is, mm. you know, mm. and all of us starts defining God in our own, mm. you know, in our own way. Mm. And I think what, what Christ is taking us back into is to say, let us allow God, God. to mm. speak. Yeah. Yes, sir. To be the one who actually tells us who, who, what we are, basically. Mm. Because now, you, you see, as you've just said, uh, we, 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 we have a, this tendency now of saying, mm. this is how God is, not him now telling us uh, who he is basically to us as well okay um the lesson of today is quite a very interesting lesson mm -hmm. the, the writer says in this postmodern age the bible is being largely interpreted through the lens of philosophy yeah that yeah. decide yeah. the authenticity of the bible um it's it's inspiration and its authority mm. so a group of people just see it discuss the word of God, and then dis decide this is some primitive book from somewhere mm -hmm. that, that, that is um, about other people's thoughts. Mm -hmm. it, it no longer has its power. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, the Bible can be put aside, um, and the view of God is said not to matter, mm -hmm. especially in this age. 
of Darwin thinking mm. 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 that mm. Mm. the earth was just some uh, big explosion from big somewhere. Bang. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm. Now the word of God is, is placed under attack. Yes. Mm. You know, as, as I was reading that uh, paragraph, I, I found that there's a fine balance that needs to be maintained mm. um, between the three views. One being a view that says, uh, let's be comfortable with our current interpretation. Mm. That interpretation is it. It's, uh, we cannot question it. Mm. Uh, and that is also by itself is wrong mm. because it doesn't give an opportunity of growth, meaning that what we know yesterday could actually be wrong about God. Mm. Uh, and there's a one view that will then say, let's continuously search the scriptures. Mm. Yes, you know, uh, and continuously challenge ourselves. Mm -hmm. And remember, that one is 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 based on the fact that there is a need to continuously improve. Mm. Uh, and even that then is in two ways. One is when you search it with your own wisdom. Mm. And I think that is where what you're talking about comes through, is when you search the scriptures, not necessarily inspired by God, however, philosophy leads you. Yeah, mm -hmm. And there is the other one that says, hang on, the understanding is that the scripture interprets itself. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, when you don't know something, don't go and put things into the Bible because all scriptures is inspired by God. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so the Holy Spirit, as the writer of the Bible, mm -hmm. will definitely de reveals everything on the, on, on the Bible. Itself. And also when it touches on Darwinian thinking <coughs> and modern philosophy, Darwinian thinking is evolution. Now what evolution does is it takes the book of Genesis and throws it out the window and says mm. that the world um, came into being through a process of eons and stuff and particles were developing into substances until now. So what that does is it takes Moses' account of creation out of the window. Mm. But now we need to also begin to study and investigate the scriptures as a historical document. Mm. This mm. is where we get to see now Darwinism, versus the historicity of the Bible. Mm. Which document is authentic? And now that we know that the Bible is inspired by God, mm. we know that God's truth is the ultimate truth. Everything else is a deception. Hence, we need a study like this one. Mm. Mm. And let us also further notice that Jesus, yes, when he was incarnated, lives amongst men. Yes, and when Jesus was living amongst men, he quotes the Old Testament. Mm. Mm. Is that is, uh, which is sometimes uh, not... Um, um, alluded to as the true word of God. Mm. People would always want to make reference mm. to the New Testament. Jesus lives and quotes the Old Testament, mm. and then hence the writing of the New Testament, because we all realize that the New Testament is the um, um, writing of the events of Jesus yes, mm. while he was yes, here. Mm. But he made reference to the Old Testament, mm. which then says the whole Bible as it is. Yes. Both the new and the and the old is a true word of God. You know, yeah. what you're saying is oh, it takes us important. to the memory text itself. Mm. The memory text, uh, as Jesus was saying, it is written. Yes. You know, uh, Christ goes, uh, in fact, he, Christ gives us a fundamental to mm. say, when you are confronted with the devil, exactly. when you are confronted with uh, temptation, temptation yes. you know, it is not your wisdom that should take you out. Exactly. It should actually be, it is written. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ himself was not lazy to read the Old Testament. Mm. You know, Christ himself could have used his own philosophy as God. Mm. But then he mm. gave us a pattern mm. to say, mm. when new faces think, you know, you must be able to say, in Deuteronomy 8 verses 3, yes, sir. it is written. Ah. Mm. You know, man shall not live by, by bread alone. And, 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 and I think that's, that's what uh, generally, you know, Christ was, was setting out there. Um, in fact, even on the, all three questions, you know, he takes him up there and says, uh, you can jump, surely you can. You know, um, I've had a recent encounter. I was shaking someone else's hand, you know, and, and then I do a fist bump on him. He says, brother, don't you trust your own faith? You know, I say, brother, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. <laughs> you know? So some of these things, we should not test our Lord, you know, and yes, it is written, you know. So, so, so whenever we are faced with challenges, Christ is giving us a model answer. Yeah. And you can only give that model answer 
if you search the scriptures. Yes, 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 sir. yes sir. So basically yeah. the model answer that Jesus is giving us is it is written. It mm. is written. I, I want us to look at this. Um, Jesus is baptized. Okay. When he is baptized, God confirms that Jesus is son by sending the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. Mm. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. Okay. 40 days down the line, the devil comes. He wants to undo what God said. Mm. When he said, this is my beloved son mm. with whom I am well pleased. Yeah. And then he tempts, tempts Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's taken to the, to the wilderness. He is tempted. Maybe before I go there, um, we should all realize that when when you choose Jesus as your personal savior, yes, ma'am, you prepare for for baptism. You are a whole new creature. Yes, you are starting a whole new journey, mm. and you are oh. bound mm. to come face to face with the devil the very same way mm. that Jesus came face to face with mm. the devil. Mm. Because mm. It, Jesus says, "We shall be tempted," mm. the very same way that he was tempted, mm. and he even says, um, "You see me doing certain miracles." If you had faith as little as a mustard seed, you would do more than what yeah. I have done. Yeah. Which means when we choose Jesus as our personal savior, we are meeting the devil at the very same way uh, Jesus met him. Mm. Yeah. Now Jesus is being tempted. Mm. The devil says, um, Brother School, it seems as if you know, there's something yes, that you want uh, to say. In fact, um, if the devil, he did not pull his punches, and tempted the son of God. Who are you to be left out? Mm. You know, mm. that's, I think that's, that's, you know, uh, uh, the devil had, he knew who Christ was. Yeah. And he knew his power. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and did not pull punches. In fact, it says, um, Jesus is tempted. You know, pa Pastor Papu normally, you know, he would say, um, the fact that it says Jesus was tempted is because Jesus had a chance of falling. Mm, mm. You know, and that, that is one thing we must understand that it was not, the devil was not playing there. Mm. Christ had a sure chance of falling. So, mm. so, so, so in, in so doing that, uh, if the, je the devil did not pull punches with Christ, uh, and uh, uh, you are not exempted. So that's the first thing. And number two, um, I think the fact that the devil waited, the devil leaves them, you know, he has a good 40 days, and right at the time when Christ is in his low, yeah, he's and when he's hungry, he goes in. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly when, you know, the devil comes in. Mm -hmm. When all is well, you know, when you've just been baptized and you receive the Holy Ghost, you know, and God has declared, this is my beloved, the devil says, leave him, you know. Mm -hmm. Waits for you, waits for you, and and it is at that time. Unfortunately, you cannot on the fortieth day say it is written. If on the first day you were not saying it is written, wow. Mm. So 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 we need to inculcate a culture of saying it is written when things are right, mm. so that when the things when it is very when when That's when you are in the place like Christ mm. and we are hungry. And we look at that bread, and that bread starts looking like, you know, and it looks like an opportunity. Mm. You know, we look at anything that is coming our way, it looks like an opportunity that I could preach and pray for, and it becomes a reality. Let me be ready with it is written. Yes. Mm. Because that's the time at which the, 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 the devil comes in. Mm. Mm. Amen. Mm. Okay, let's further look at this. Um, when 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 the devil says to Jesus, you can turn the stones to bread, and Jesus says, it is written that men uh, will not live by bread only, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus is not only speaking with the basis of that moment, but he goes back to ancient Israel. Mm. He sees Jesus, uh, he sees God uh, working with the children of Israel mm. for 40 yes, years, yes, giving providence for mm. them. And oh. then when Jesus speaks, He's basing on that, that mm. I've seen my father do it. Mm. For 40 years, he gave them provision. Therefore, he can take care of me. Secondly, Amen. Wow. secondly, Jesus says at that moment, my father is the only source of life. Mm. Mm. So if mm. I have to live, the source of life should give me life. Yeah. Mm. Therefore, his word is like a source of life to us. Mm. Oh. 
And then finally, here Jesus is saying, I am submitting myself to my father. Mm. Mm. My life is in his hands. Mm. So when we say it is written, going through any situation in life, we are submitting ourselves to God. Mm. And we are saying we are allowing our father to take over brother Danda. Mm. Christ here was revealing um, one thing to us as, as, as his children, uh, especially in these days, that when we are tempted by the glory of the things of this world, mm. Uh, the beauty and positions in workplaces that we should always remember that um, obviously in those places you will be tempted to do things that are not in line with the word of God. Mm. So in our minds we need to 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 have to 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 cultivate a, a culture to say if it does not come from God, then I will not take it. You mm. go back to the word of God and see if okay. this thing that you are receiving, it is coming from the Lord or it's coming from men and it's going to... to, to because sometimes Satan brings things uh, in a silver platter and mm. you get excited and you think that it comes from God. Mm. True. You, you know, something else about it is written mm. that, that, that strike me is on the third one, you know, the, the last temptation. When, when the devil expect Christ. Now, the devil had tried to hide his, mm. you know, mm. his true intentions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, because, in fact, all he wanted to do was for Christ to doubt God. Mm. Uh, uh, in the last one, he comes out clear. He says, listen, I'll give you all of these things mm. if mm. you just worship me. And, and Christ comes out very clear and says, it is written, you shall worship no other God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when, when, when we see, when we, when we think of it is written, we always see it in the sense of we are in a disadvantaged position. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in a disadvantaged position mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and this thing, you know, we, we are hungry. Yeah. You know, we are really hungry, and um, and and when you look at the at the situation of U U Eve, yes, when you look at the situation of Eve, Eve was already what God had said. Mm. Mm. I'll make you like God, and God had said, "Let me make man in my own image." Yes. Mm. And 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 when Christ there, he refused to be reduced to somebody who's going to bow to the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is written, does not, is not a, 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 you are refusing to reduce yourself mm -hmm. below what God has placed you. Mm -hmm. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is written does. Mm -hmm. So because the devil, what the devil actually wants to do through a temptation, when you yield to a temptation, mm -hmm. the devil wants to reduce you to below what God had placed you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 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 Whenever we say it is written, it is in fact not the fact that we are putting ourselves lower. Mm. In fact, we are assuming the position that God had always purposed for us. Mm. So, 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 understanding the word of God and us being able to say it is written, mm. help us to assume the role that God had always had for us. Mm. Mm. And let us remember that temptation did not only happen then. Mm. Actually, the word of God cautions us to say, greater temptations are coming towards the end of time. Mm. That's when the devil will release the best of, of, of his temptations to make sure that even the chosen don't make it to the kingdom. If we don't teach ourselves to live day to day by it is written, mm. we have no chance of standing there at the end of time. Amen. Not the best of his temptations, the worst of his temptations. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say this. Now let's look at Jesus and the law. Amen. Okay. Jesus is with his disciples. He teaches his disciples that the word of God, it is the word of God is law. They should not doubt it, neither should they doubt its authority. And he even says to the to the Sadducees, You do not know the law. You mm. do not understand the scripture, mm. and therefore they cannot understand God. Mm. Therefore, the word of God is divine authority. Um, while we're still there, um, when you look into um, the words of Christ, um, as we we're talking about, it is written. Uh, Christ himself had developed the culture of um, referring to the Bible. 
Now, when he, when, when, he, when he teaches his disciples, he goes back to the word of God again. He says, um, I did not come. I, I think that is in Matthew chapter chapter uh, chapter 5, mm -hmm. where he teaches his disciples. He says, I did not come to destroy uh, the law, but I came to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Christ himself is the fulfillment of the law. Yes. Mm. So when 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 he comes, he does not uh, he does not want them to have an idea that the whole world has today that Christ, when he came, came to replace the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. That is why all the time he referred to the Old Testament, and he was trying to open their eyes so that they could see the the things that were spoken in times past. Mm -hmm. That okay, this one has been fulfilled. This one has been fulfilled. Yeah. Hence, you hear him says that yeah. there is not even one word that will pass away mm. unless all is fulfilled yes. so basically christ himself was the fulfillment and he wanted them to keep learning and seeing things that are being fulfilled mm. day by day while he was still alive even afterwards mm. okay let us also notice that here christ is trying to teach us a lesson that the word of god is valid in all times and in all seasons yes, mm. it mm. shall be our basis of reference whether you are having a hard time or a good time, mm -hmm. in all instances, the yeah. word of God shall always be valid in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish just a little bit to go back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, yeah. where Jesus says, Do not think that I'm come to dwell with the law mm -hmm. or the prophets, yes. but I'm come to fulfill. Now, the word used there for law is Torah. Mm -hmm. And the Torah is the first five books of the New Testament, the books of Moses. Yes. People tend to think that um, it, 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 it refers maybe to the Ten Commandments, but the Ten Commandments are part of the Torah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he says the prophets, that then gives us a summary of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, when he says, do not think that I'm come to do away with the law of prophets, but to fulfill, he has come to fulfill all the messianic prophecies mm -hmm. that we get from the books of Moses and the prophets that were pointing to him as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he's come to fulfill them. Not necessarily to do what? To abrogate or, or trample them. And the world loves to misinterpret this text a lot. Mm. Mm. Where we need to understand that the fulfillment is messianic. He's fulfilling mm -hmm. the messianic prophecies exactly. found in the Torah about the, the Messiah as well as the prophets. I'd like us to look at um, um, Matthew chapter 22 as well. I just want to read it so that we can actually understand when Christ was also talking about the fulfillment that he was, uh, that you have also mentioned. Yes, sir. Um, there Jesus Christ, let's read from uh, verse 37. It says, mm -hmm. Jesus, oh, okay, let me just start from uh, verse uh, 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with, thy, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like, is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two, on these two commandments hang all the law mm. and the prophets. Mm. Now, Jesus Christ, uh, mm. he's pointing them straight to to the Ten Commandments. Yes, sir. A lot of people today, they do not look at <laughs> the Ten Commandment, uh, Ten Commandments holistically. Mm. There are certain commandments that they believe that um, apply it. today. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And certain commandments don't apply anymore. Mm. Now, Jesus Christ, um, he brings into the mind of his hearers, um, the Ten Commandments in this view, the love to God and the love to man. So basically in the Ten Commandments, and he says in these two, the love to God, the love to man, hang all, the, both the prophets and the law. Mm -hmm. Now, in other words, Jesus Christ, when he came on planet Earth, mm. he did not come to do away with the Ten Commandments. It is true. There is not even one. As he says, not even one will pass until all is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. As some people feel like they can play around with the Ten Commandments and remove certain things there and say, no, this one does not apply anymore because Jesus Christ had come and died for us. But Jesus Christ, he says, not even one word mm -hmm. from the law. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And just, uh, just maybe um, to to interject there, I, I love what you are uh, you're saying in in Matthew chapter twenty two. Now, verse forty, a lawyer comes to Jesus to challenge Jesus. Now we know that a lawyer is very gifted when when it comes to questioning, yes. cross questioning yes. people. Yeah. You know, trying to get them to break down and get to a certain point where they know that they can poke them. Yeah. You know, and this is a very intelligent scholar who comes to Jesus. Yeah. He's challenging Jesus to tempt him, and he's asking about which commandment. Yeah. Is the crisis. Now, this commandment it refers to the Decalogue. This is the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jesus says, he refers to um, your commandment that has to do with men and men, and commandments mm-hmm. that have to do with men and God. Yeah. And I love what he says in verse 40. He says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. Now, there's something that I, I think we should pay attention to here. Yeah. The Ten Commandments are divided into two, yeah. like we said. The others is you and your neighbor, yeah. and the other one is you and God. And Jesus is literally mm-hmm. saying that. Yeah. But you see, verse 40 goes beyond that. Yeah. Verse 40 goes beyond telling us that half of the commandments, the first table is man and God, and the other table is man and his friend, but he mentions the prophets. Yeah. Now, this puts me under an impression then that the Ten Commandments, the books of Moses, and the prophets all hang on what? The principles of the Ten Commandments, mm. which is a man and his neighbor and a man and God. Mm. Could we then say and conclude on this verse, maybe a, making a hypothesis, that the whole Bible is an exposition of the two tables of stone? Exactly. <laughs> you see, yes. The thing is, you do away with those two commandments. You do away with the conundrum of sin. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You do away with that, you do away with the need of the atonement. Yes. Mm-hmm. You do away with that, you do away with a lot of things. You do, you do away with the issue of why do we die. Yes. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, you do away with an explanation of sin itself. Yeah. How did we get ourselves to be here? So, so, so you doing away with, with the Ten Commandments, you are which actually explains how sin came to be and uh, because even the ten commandments as a principle hangs on the fact that god put a law down Mm. and say you shall not eat of this tree Mm -hmm. you know as soon as you do away with the law you actually do away with christ even dying and and if christ you know died you know his 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 death was not for our resurrection. Amen. Just last one, closing one, on, no, the, on Jesus and the law. Just closing yeah. one on Jesus and the law. Okay. John chapter 14, it's Jesus and the law. John chapter 14, verse 15. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm. We mm. cannot express love to Jesus if we don't keep his commandments. Okay. And now verse 15, If you verse, verse 16 says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that mm. he may abide with you forever. So the prerequisite of us receiving the Holy Spirit is to love Jesus, which is to keep the law. Yes. Now, uh, if we don't keep the commandments and we claim the presence of the Holy Spirit, something's wrong. Mm. But, but, <laughs> but, but here's the thing that, you know, if you remember the verse that you read, which is in Matthew 5, yeah. 17 to 20. Yeah. You see, you, 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 you made something very interesting to say. Uh, Christ is the fulfillment of, yeah. of of the law. In fact, the Old uh, Testament, the Old Testament, yes. Old Testament. Yes. Now there are two yes. things that gets fulfilled: is that the point, the Old Testament pointed to Christ. Yes, sir. Okay, but there was something that had happened with the Old Testament, you know, which Christ then started expanding to, from verses twenty-one. Mm-hmm. You have heard that it was said. Mm. You know, mm. you have heard that it was said. People at that time started adopting a legalistic approach. Mm. What a book tick is that? Box. Where are you reading? Verses five, five. Uh, it's still five. Uh, it's Seventeen five. to twenty. Oh, to twenty. Matthew chapter but five. I'm just yeah. Okay. Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter so I'm just going to twenty-one. You have heard that it was said uh, by them of old, "You shall not kill." You know, people would be comfortable with the fact that you shall not kill, but um, but whoever uh, shall not kill. If you speak harshly against your brother and all of those things. Now, Christ starts saying, because you are interpreting this word mm. without the Holy Spirit, hmm. you tend to have a legalistic view. Mm. That is why when I go, I need to give you the Holy Spirit mm. who's going to make you understand oh, yes. how, to, how, to, oh, how, yes. how, how to appreciate this. The law. So, mm. How to appreciate the law. Ah. Because you've now become so legalistic on this thing. So 
so so so Christ oh. Christ had two options one mm. to fulfill what has been pointing to him mm. and one to say I will not I've not come here to stop this mm. you know this law mm. but there's a problem with this law mm. how your interpretation is okay. so I've come here to fulfill I've come to show you also okay. mm. how to how to approach this law why we're okay. still there um oh. I love what you just said uh, it reminds me of the words of Paul when he says that the law is spiritual Mm, and we are kind of so yeah. there was no way for us as human beings to keep the law without the spirit of god yes. so in other words we needed christ to come in us so that we are able to keep the law spiritually the holy mm. spirit can only keep the law exactly yes, okay sir. let's look at jesus and all scripture yeah. here mm. we meet uh, jesus followers they are confused mm. Jesus has been crucified. He has mm. been buried. They are in doubt. They can't begin to comprehend mm. what has happened. And on the road to Emmaus, uh, Jesus visits mm. Uh, mm. the disciples. Mm. He was still going to visit later when they were in a group. But on the road, yeah. Jesus visits uh, the disciples. Um, here, there is a disappointment. Here, there is doubt. Mm. Let me further tie it with another event, 1844. Yes, ma'am. People are waiting for the second coming of Christ. Yes, ma'am. People have prepared themselves. They've sold property. They've sold businesses. They have given what they can give away. Mm. Uh, and then they wait for Jesus to arrive. He does not arrive. Mm. Doubt, mm. disappointment, mm. confusion. Mm. Let's speak to that. Yeah. Mm. When that happens... There is no solution. People are told, go back to the scriptures. <laughs> exactly. Go back to the word of God. When the disciples are in doubt, mm. um, Jesus points them back to the scripture. Mm. Wow. This is what was supposed to happen. I was supposed to go through this. Amen. When 1844 believers are disappointed, they are appointed, they are told, go back to the scripture. See where you made a mistake. <laughs> Which, In fact, I like that parallel you just thrown. It's beautiful. Because Christ is with the disciples for three years. Mm -hmm. And he tells them of the disappointments that they are going to have. Mm -hmm. To an extent, he tells them that you, Peter, you'll actually deny me. He, Christ does not stop them from experiencing the disappointment. No. Mm. In fact, when, when he comes back, he asks them, do you love me? Yeah. And until such time that Peter feels so empty and he's not the same pompous Peter, he says, Lord, you know. Mm. Because Peter, you know, because disappointment, are, they are part of our Christian journey. Mm. Now, if you say the disciples' journey cannot be measured by their disappointment, in their understanding of the mission of Christ, you can rightfully also say the, the journey of the Adventists in 1844 cannot be measured by their disappointment mm. because these two are parallel. There are disappointments in the Christian journey. Mm. And sometimes people question the authenticity of the Adventists based on the disappointment. If you do that, then you might as well question the authenticity of the apostles based on that disappointment. Why are you still talking about the disappointment? Something comes to mind. You know, at times we get disappointed because we don't listen to what God says. Mm. Christ repeatedly, he told them that that was going to happen. A mm. couple of times. But they were not listening to that. Something else was in their minds. Mm. Positions. Know and everything else and he's telling them that i am going to die and be resurrected on the third day mm -hmm. then when that time comes they get disappointed as if god did not speak to them and tell them about those things as if they were mm. not prepared mm. Mm. they were mm. not prepared yeah. okay maybe the biggest question we should be asking ourselves today is what do we do when we are disappointed mm. what do we do when we are in doubt yeah. what, who do we use as a reference? We are being taught a lesson here. Yeah. When you are in disappointment, yeah. when you are in grief, yeah. mm. when you are in confusion, yeah. go back to the scripture. Amen. Now let's look at Jesus yeah. and the origin and history of the Bible. You know, 
we live in a postmodern generation and when we say postmodern we say they are relative people tell you the truth is relative truth mm. is subject to your perception of it there is no absolute truth yeah. mm. and so uh, uh, as a result people have questioned the authenticity of the bible as a historical document people have done that a lot now I, I, i'm in con communication with certain people many people actually believe this way they will tell you that the bible itself um, was a roman construct it was created in the time of constantine and stuff to control christians and all of that mm. so when they say that they are saying all the history of the 1500 years that the bible has is only limited to the fourth century the time of constantine it is created mm. to do what to control people and therefore they then tend to question the bible as being the authoritative word of god in our lives but i want us to look at jesus jesus who's not only a biblical character but a historical character as well yeah. first and foremost jesus taught that the bible is verily the word of god jesus who lived i think three centuries before the the, the, mm -hmm. the birth of constantine he taught that the bible is the word of god verily and i love that because when you look at matthew chapter 19 verse 4 and 5 Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 and 5, if I may just quickly. There we go. He says, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Now, pause. Jesus here is quoting what happened in the book of Genesis. Yes. In mm -hmm. Genesis. Yes. Where we get a created, an account of how the world was originated and created and that also touches on jesus and origin but i love he does not say didn't you hear what the scriptures say but he says he so he attributes the book of moses and his account of creation to god yes and he does not say uh, moses said but he says didn't you hear what, what he, he said? said so jesus was verily teaching that what all the biblical authors said and produced in this text mm. were actually under god and that god was the main power that was communicating through them jesus acknowledged mm. that the bible is verily the word of god and when you read matthew chapter 12 uh, 3 and 4 mark chapter 10 6 and 8 luke 4 5 25 to 7 luke 11 luke 11 51 and all these verses jesus there refers to the accounts of the old testament as actual historical accounts mm. so jesus is quoting the historical events that happened in the old testament as actual uh, historical truth and this is where you see that jesus actually propagated or administered or, or advocated that the bible was a historical document with historical with real historical places characters and you can also work out the chronology and the way we should we ought to investigate the scriptures is how jesus investigated the scriptures we must quote the scripture in his historical context that mm -hmm. counters then the argument that constantine created the bible and it's not a historical document mm. thank you mm. amazing uh, let me further indicate that um, here Jesus wants to make it clear who the creator is, mm. who the creatures is, yes. who has drawn the way of living, who mm. must follow it, in which aspects. Yes. The Old Testament is qualified. Mm -hmm. The events of the Old Testament Old Testament are qualified. Historical. The places are evident. Yeah. We see them in our day-to-day -day living. Mm -hmm. The very places that the Bible talks about are evident. Yeah. We see them. Yeah. Yeah. And the people that are quoted are not only in the Bible, they are in our history books. It is true. Yeah. Therefore, we can't deny. Mm -hmm. We have both evidence in our history books and in the Bible. Yes, ma'am. Some of the events that are quoted in the Bible are mm. quoted in our history books, mm. therefore proving that the word of God is true. Mm. And if whatever was, was quoted in the past did happen, it should then tell us that whatever is being quoted for the future mm. will mm. truly happen. Mm. Exactly. Now let's, let's further look at the apostles and the Bible. Mm. Now Jesus mm -hmm. teaches his disciples the Bible, the scripture. Remember, Jesus has it in his mind that someday I shall leave them. Mm. Therefore, they are supposed to carry on the work mm. of teaching the nations, yes. converting them to the faith, mm. preparing for the second coming. So Jesus sits down with, the, with his disciples mm. and he teaches them his word. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the lesson which talks about how Jesus and the disciples you know, interpreted, you know, uh, how they interpreted the scriptures. We've been talking for a long time now with about Jesus and how Jesus interacted with the 
Old Testament. Because mm. at that time, uh, both in the time of Jesus as well as in the time of the disciples, the only book that they had was the Torah, which mm. was uh, the, the Old Testament. So now we, 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 we're now going to get a sense of how did the uh, disciples themselves interacted with the Old Testament. Did they find it as a, 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 an infallible book? Did they find it, did they reference the, the Old Testament? How important was the Old Testament to them? You know, I, I would like us. I, I'd like to draw us to a case in um, Acts four, verses 20, 20, 26, 24 and six. Now here we have a situation where in the earlier chapters, in fact, we've had Pentecost happen, uh, and after that, um, John and Peter heals a lame man. You know, and after they've healed this lame man, you know, the the Pharisees under pressure. You know, even though they wanted to, to, to put them in jail, you know, but they said, you know, we cannot put them in jail because we cannot refute the miracles that they, you know, that they, they they've done, and uh, and then they say, you know, listen, guys, go away and please don't talk about Jesus anymore, uh, because they knew that in an event that they do something very drastic against mm -hmm. against them, they will get, you know, they'll, they'll have a public revolt in their hands. And, um, and 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 I, I like what Peter then says: says let it be up to you. Should we listen to men or or you? Hmm. Uh, and and surely we will listen. Should we be listening to you or should we be listening to God? And now in 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 twenty four, you know, if you just jump on it, hmm. you will not understand it. But in the it's when these uh, when 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 the apostles are thanking God in twenty four to twenty six, they are thanking God of that deliver. Hmm. Of that delivery from the the Pharisees, and it reads as follows: And when they heard that, they lifted up their voices to God. Now this is the the the, the apostles with one accord and said, "Lord, you are God, which has made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them." And this is an account that is found in the book of Psalms one forty six verse six, and 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 this is this just shows how they've. You know, they they said, Lord, we know that you are all powerful. You are able to deliver us now purely because you are Lord our God. Mm. And now where would they get the fact that God is is the creator of heavens and earth? Old Testament. Old Testament. Mm. Old Testament. And then we and then later on then they go to in, in Acts thirteen verses, you know. Now this is when they uh, Acts, uh, Acts 13 verses 32 to 33. Now this is, um, I think this is 32 and 33, that is Barnabas and Saul, when they were, they were, they were sent off. But in this one, they quote a promise, you know, a, a promise that God had made to David. Mm. Also in the book of, mm. of Psalms, Psalms 55 verses 3. Yes. And then after that, you know, we start getting a, a, a conversation, you know, when God speaks to the situation of Pharaoh, mm. which is found in the book of Exodus 9, verses 16. Yes, so you're finding many inc incidents where the Pharisees, it's already the, the apostles themselves, in affirming their faith, they referred back to, 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 um, to the Old, the Old Testament. Testament. Yes. And what's interesting is that there is a scholar, there is a scholar in the lesson that's mentioned, who's managed to come up with about 2,688 references. And these are all references that hmm. you find in the New Testament, but they find their origins in the Old, Old Testament. Testament. Wow. To just yes. show that the wow. Old Testament continues to, you know, and so you're finding the the writers of the New Testament who found the Old Testament being, you know, so can, uh, being their, their wealth of knowledge. Can so, we agree then that the Old Test the New Testament is built from Old Testament materials? But but more than anything, I think, it, it, in fact, the interpretation of, of, of the scriptures cannot be done without looking at the Old Testament. Mm, so, 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 so we're finding, and, and we're getting a lot of Christians, you know, who, who likes 
the old the new testament, the new testament yeah. yeah who like the new testament because it's contemporary it talks to them and it's there the are a lot of other cultures there are a lot of things that are not done you know if you touch somebody with blood and say the old testament still talks with that you know you must mm. watch and therefore i'm not going to read the old testament but you are actually finding that for you as a christian i think um what it talks about is that you as a as a christian you cannot be discriminative mm. okay so Christ basically not discriminative mm, basically what brother Sku is saying mm. we're going back to the words of paul in in second timothy 3 verse 16 17 um, scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and for every good work. Mm. In conclusion to our lesson, we have come to the end of our lesson. Let us remember that the word of God is a light unto our path. Mm -hmm. We therefore choose to walk in the light of God or we choose to walk in the darkness forever. Our, um, our lesson study for next week is the Bible the authoritative source of our theology. Oh. May the good Lord keep you, and bless mm -hmm. you, till we meet again. Until then, God bless. Brother Mundle We pray for us. We thank you for this lesson that is teaching us that the Bible is an authentic document, which is authoritative in our lives. May you help us to align our lives with the Bible. May we live within the perimeters of your word. May the Holy Spirit rule us for Christ. Be with the viewers at home and keep us until we meet next week. Amen. Amen. Amen.